Story 1 by Misunderstood 34 So me and a few friends decided to go on an adventure one night. It was around 12 a.m. when we left. It's about a half hour drive out of town to this cemetery. We all packed up the car with our equipment and headed out. As we got to the cemetery, we were greeted with a gate that closed off the entrance, so we had to go on foot the rest of the way. As we got out of the car, we started hearing noises almost immediately. We noticed it sounded like someone hitting a branch on a tree, and as we listened, it was three hits every few minutes. We decided to call out to see if anyone was there, and as to no surprise, no one answered. Now let me mind you, the cemetery is in the middle of nowhere, and as we started walking in past the cemetery gate, we noticed that we all smelled something rotten, the smell of sulfur. We continued to walk in ignoring the smell, and as we got further in the cemetery, we heard the sound of native drums off in the distance. Now this cemetery is on an island with one way in and one way out. So, there's no way anyone could be there. It is a remote area with no one around for miles. As we got to the end of the cemetery, we notice a statue with no head and no hand. The rumors of this statue are. Firstly, if you stand in front of the statue with your back turned towards it, you will feel a hand touch you. Secondly, if you walk around the statue backwards three times with your eyes closed and end up facing the statue, you will see her eyes bleed. We ended up trying our backs turned towards the statue. Nothing for the first few minutes and I felt a tug on my sweater, so I jumped and panicked a little bit. We did try the second one and nothing happened. So we stayed for a little while and ended up hearing strange noises some more as a rope was heard swinging from a tree but couldn't find the source of the noise. We brought out the spirit box next. We turned on the box and asked it a few questions and got a few responses and I could have sworn I heard my name come out of the box. So, when we asked it if whatever was there knew my name, we got an intelligent response. It says my name clear as day. Asked it if whatever was there, if it knew any of my other friends' names, and it said their names clear as day. So anyways, as we walked out, we started to smell the disgusting sulfur smell again. And as we got to the car, this was about 2.30 a.m. at this point, and when we made it to the car, we stayed at the car for a little bit to see if we could see or hear anything else before we left. We just so happened to look down the long, dark road that led ahead and noticed there was something standing in the road. At this point, we had all our lights and equipment battery replenished, so no lights on at all. We continued to look at whatever this figure was down the road and noticed it had bright, glowing orange eyes and was about six to seven feet tall, if it stood up. This figure, whatever it was, walked disorientated and was walking towards us. So we got super spooked by whatever this thing was that was watching us. So we hopped in the car as quickly as we could and turned on the lights as quickly as possible. As we're in the car, we all look at each other as the sign to get the hell out of here. As I start the car, the car won't turn over. We were stuck there until the morning with no cell service and no way to call a tow. So, as we all sat in the car terrified all night, we waited until morning to walk to the end of the road to get service and call the tow. This is the first time I've ever encountered something like this, and we always have such a hard time coming back to that cemetery. We don't know what we saw that day, but we've never spoke about it again since. Story 2 By Bowler Beautiful 5804 when I was in university, I lived in an older house that was built beside a church. The house was over a hundred years old, but unsure of actual age. I lived in the basement and had a few housemates. We didn't know at the time it was built on a cemetery. That was discovered shortly after I moved out. Weird things would happen in the house, but I'm still not sure if it was haunted or just purely coincidental. I would hear footsteps above my room late at night and when I would ask the next day who was in the kitchen at 2 a.m., my housemates would say they never came downstairs at all. My one housemate had a cat, and the one day we were in the kitchen, the back door opened by itself, and the cat walked in. I did see what I believe was a shadow figure in that house. I had a bookshelf beside my bed, and had a Buddha statue on one of the top shelves. In the middle of the night, there was a huge bang, and when I woke up, I saw a black figure jump from the bookshelf to the floor and run out of the room. 
the shelf with the Buddha figure had fallen off the bookshelf, and the Buddha had smashed to pieces on the floor. I thought at first maybe it was my housemate's cat that had somehow knocked the shelf off. But the next morning, when I told my housemate what had happened, they said the cat had been locked in their room with them all night. Shortly after that, I moved out. The house was owned by the church, and there was a parking lot in the backyard. The church was adding an addition, and had started construction and digging up the parking lot behind the house. During the construction, human remains were found, which obviously halted the construction until it was determined why the remains were there. It was found that before the house existed, a small cemetery had been on that land. At least 30 skeletons were found, and not sure if they were able to determine the identities or why they were buried there. For some reason, when the house was built, it was decided to build on top of the cemetery, and the records of the cemetery's existence was either lost or forgotten over time. Not sure if other housemates had experiences there. It was a creepy house, and I remember them mentioning hearing things at night and not liking to stay there alone. Unsure if it was haunted, but weird things definitely did happen there. Story 3 by Yo What Was That? This story happened in Kansas when my friends asked me if I wanted to go check out this haunted graveyard out. It was a 20-minute drive from my house in a town called Stull, Kansas. I was curious and decided to Google it and see what it was about. The legend has been around a long time ago. The story goes, a witch danced with the devil at this cemetery and a child was conceived. They used to meet there every now and again by this tree. When the baby was born, it was very deformed and didn't make it, so they say it was buried at this tree. There was a church there at one time, but it was torn down. This church also has steps that go straight down and it is said that when you go down them, it only seems like five minutes. But when you come back, it's been like five days. There's also no roof, and when it rains, it falls off like there is one. There are more stories, but you can Google that. Well, one night after the bar closed, I drove some girls back because I was DD. Just so you know, I was completely sober. Guess who was in our driveway? My three friends who were drunk and wanted me to drive them out there. I told them I was tired and they needed to go to sleep. They said no and proceeded to beg me to take them to the cemetery. After some back and forth conversations, I decided to drive them on this adventure. I told them that I wasn't getting off the car and I would be waiting only for 20 minutes. Before we left, I ran up to my room and grabbed sage and holy water just to be safe. It's 2.30 in the morning and we begin our drive. We got to Stull at 3 a.m. and proceeded to drive through this little quiet town where everyone is asleep. We get to the end of town when we see a top of a hill that goes down and off into the dark. As we drive the down the hill, we see a trailer towards our left, as well as a new church. On the opposite side was the tree, cemetery, and the old church. At this point, my friends were getting scared and were talking about not going in. I told them they better get off since we drove out this far. We first drive by and it was very creepy. It gave me goosebumps all over my body. Now I'm looking where am I going to park? They told me the tree we passed had an overgrown driveway. I turn around and back into the driveway where we were covered trees. They jump off, but Quickie ran back because a car was coming. It turns out to be the sheriff. It drove by slowly and continued to drive over the hill and out of sight. At this moment, they jump off and disappear around the corner of the trees and we're gone. I'm sitting here alone in the dark with music playing and smoking a cigarette. When I got this bad feeling like someone was behind the car, my stomach dropped. All the hair on my body stood straight up. I didn't want to look in the review mirror. Terror swept over my body. I flipped the mirror up and started burning the sage. I looked down to grab my holy water when something hit the back of the car three times. The whole car shook violently. I closed my eyes, started crying, and began praying. When all of a sudden, my three friends started banging on the windows and asking me to unlock the doors. Once they jump in, they started yelling at me to peel out and leave now. I drove off so fast I didn't realize the headlights were off. I didn't tell them what happened yet, but I asked them what they saw. They said in the trees where I was parked at, they heard something big walking around breaking branches when they heard a growl and then a scream. They thought it was me, but I didn't scream. Mind you, this all happened within five to seven minutes. 
One of them wanted to go back and see what this was. I argue with him for a few minutes, but I was overruled. I let them know I would park by the church across from the cemetery. I felt this spot was safer since I could see everything this time. I pull in and parked. They grab a flashlight and told me, we will flash you three times to let you know where we were at. I watched them run across the street, through a hole in the fence, and towards the tree line when they disappear into the dark. The old church sits on top of a hill and the headstones are all over the bottom of it. My friends ran up this hill when I see someone climbing up it and then ran behind the church. I said, damn, these guys are brave to split up from what looked like inside the church through the windows. I'm assuming the windows are broke out and the door is gone. I see three flashes. I flash them back with my headlights when all three of them came running across the street, hopped in and told me to get the hell out of there. I asked them what happened. They said they heard walking and talking in the cemetery, but couldn't tell where it was coming from. They saw a tall back figured standing up by the church. When they saw me flash my lights, they heard the same scary scream again, got spooked and ran out. I asked them if they split up and ran around the back of the church and flashed me three times. They began to ask me what I was talking about, so I told them what happened the first and second time. It got very silent. I thought I was going to be safe in the car. Once we got back to campus at around 5 a.m., we never spoke about this experience again. Story 4 By Dirty Birdie 523 When I was 17, I'm 24 now, I visited a cemetery at night with a small group of friends. We were just going to look at the graves, give a little love to those graves that look like no one has visited them, because they were buried so long ago. We were not going there to break or mess around with any of the graves, since most of us were very spiritual, not religious. I had always liked cemeteries and felt at peace, comfortable, and relaxed when I was in one. I think that's why this experience happened. We arrived at the cemetery at around 8 p.m. I decided to linger behind to read some of the graves and see what was written on them. During this time, I blank out and what happens next was told to me by my friends, hours later. I called out to the nearest person in my group. He turned around to laugh and tell me to quit playing around. At that moment, my voice changed to a southern accent. I began to tell my friends the following story. I was playing in the barn with the kittens when a man came in with a gun and starting shooting at me. I don't think they would have believed I wasn't the one speaking if the voice coming out of me hadn't been so different. I don't know why he did it. He was my daddy's best friend. For the next two hours, I led them around the cemetery pointing out graves and telling them about the people buried there like I knew them. One of my friends had her phone out to use as a flashlight and recorded everything I was saying so they could fact check when we went back to the house. Eventually, I stopped again, frowning at this one headstone. This is my brother. He got to live a long, long time. It's not fair. I wanted to live too, I said, stomping my foot before just collapsing on the ground. Eventually, my friends escort me out of the cemetery, fearing that I would hurt myself. I didn't wake up until we got home that night. I remember I had the worst headache of my whole life. My friends started asking me questions about the night and showed me the video. We looked up as much information as we could on the internet to see if the information we were given was right. It was right about everything except one thing. The grave I had collapsed on top of hadn't been the brother of the girl who had supposedly possessed me. He had been the son of her father's best friend. The same best friend who she said shot her. I've never been back to that cemetery since. I'm afraid a little girl won't be the one to possess me this time. I still can't believe what happened to me that night but I truly hope that little girl found peace for telling us her story.